Jen, it is so good to see you. It's, it's so good to see like you. It's like a too. reunion, I know, right? I'm From so Celebrity happy. Rehab. I know. What what an amazing time and journey. journey yeah. It and is great to see you look beautiful. Thank you. We're all just doing so many different things, but recovery related pretty yeah. much. Yeah. It's always like my core thing is always like recovery. How am I gonna benefit? Like how is that gonna help me to keep spreading the message? It's wonderful. Thank so you. I'm just curious, you know, getting your recovery out there, your sobriety out there so publicly. How did that kind of change your life? What did that feel like? You know, it was interesting. Um, first of all, doing a rea reality show for the first time in my life, um, I had no idea what to expect. And um, I, I didn't know breaking my anonymity on a worldly scale would change me. You know, and, and, you know, be part, for me to be part of that movement for what we're doing yes. today, you know, and talking about it and, and not being, you know, not bringing any shame to, you right. know, being in recovery anymore. I, um, I, I, I didn't know that even t till today that it would change me. Like people, you know, on planes will say, oh my God, like you helped me so much or, you know, that, that was well, me was the or first my time family. But rehab, what a rehab, what happened in a rehab was yeah. exposed. Nobody yeah. really knew. So can you imagine all the people watching it going, oh my God, that's what it's like. I need to do this. Yeah. I need to get sober. And so, you know, I still get people coming up to me about Celebrity Rehab or Sober House and saying, you know, um, everything, I was either high watching it or like I wanted to get better because I saw that. And I don't think any of us knew what that kind was going to do, you know, have. the impact. And um, I remember when it first started coming out and I was getting all these emails and, you know, yeah. on social media and stuff and, you know, they wanted help and stuff and, and I didn't have the tools at the time right you know right, right. like today there's much more tools you know with me yeah, that I can yeah. you know assess assist people with but um, it was such a strange thing because people you know from doing movies and magazines like people would you know say oh I love that movie that you're in or yeah, you yeah, know yeah. your magazine was so beautiful that spread but this people thought they knew me you right, know and, and right. like they had this connection and what my only interpretation is that they've been watching me on their couch in their living room or in their bedroom with their family you know right 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 and they had that intimate relationship right. and and they well, you weren't objectified you weren't just a picture you weren't just yeah. a cover on, on a magazine and yeah. i wanted to talk about that because you were one of the first young supermodels the youngest supermodels in a uh, couple of magazines? Yeah, quite a few, hundreds, a few like hundreds. Like Elle and Vogue and, and some others. Yeah. Which other ones? Uh, um, I mean, from uh, Allure to uh, wow. GQ and, I mean, details, name it. it. I was in pretty much every magazine. How did that um, affect you? How did that affect your life being so young and being thrown sort of in the limelight? And also I read that you were the breadwinner of your family. And yes. so, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit too, but that sort of groomed you to become sort of codependent, taking oh care God. of others, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering how that all played into your disease of addiction. You know, um, my family's from Argentina. I was first generation born in America, and um, my parents, you know, dirt roads and donkeys is where I grew up in Argentina, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. It was so different than growing up here um, in California, uh -huh. uh, where I live. and. Um, you know, getting, I got discovered by Bruce Weber. Um, he's still one of the biggest photographers in the world wow. today. And, uh, you know, we were at the Santa Monica Pier. My life just changed from, you know, dirt roads and donkeys to becoming, you know, a supermodel yeah. and being on covers of magazines. And uh, in my early teenage years, you know, from 14 on, it was all about the outside stuff. You know, when those years where you need to, you know, you learn about self-worth and self-esteem and doing esteemable things for yourself, I was not ever allowed to speak. The, I remember, you know, they would tell me like, anytime I had an input, they would say, you know, you're just, you're just a hanger. Wow. You know, your voice doesn't matter. Wow. So my voice didn't matter in such an early age that that's how I grew up, you know? And, and you know, the supermodels, my body started developing. I was 5'6 when I got discovered, I'm 5'10 now. Wow. And my body started changing, I'm Latin, I've got hips, you know? Uh -huh, and uh -huh. um, the agents would tell my mom to take me out of school and put me in steam rooms and saunas for hours. And, uh -huh. you know, again, we didn't know any better. Yeah. And um, the models taught me how to eat boxes of laxatives and, and lettuce, you know? and it was such a... So the first disease was really an eating disorder. And so I wonder what you think about the fact that so many people do cross-addict. Oh, they start yeah. either with an eating disorder and then it goes to 
you know, alcoholism, you know, drug, drug abuse. It can start the other way around, then you can do binge eating after you get sober. So what are your, what are your thoughts about that cross addiction? Oh, cross addiction definitely exists. You know, I really do believe actually my first, um, and my first ism was people pleasing, you know, uh, trying to oh. fit in, you know, I do anything to be part of your group, liked by you, accepted by you syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that is an early childhood because I felt so uniquely different, not knowing anything about addiction, recovery, you know, a disease. And, um, you know, I, w I always say I was probably a great model because I'm a great chameleon. I believe we all are. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was yeah. great at wearing masks and becoming whatever mm -hmm. you wanted me to. Kind of that false facade. Oh, yeah. And uh, not, you know, having a foundation, you know, mm -hmm. for me is, you know, and coming from trauma, I believe we're all trauma survivors of some sort. Yeah. And, you know, growing up that way, I already felt responsible for my family. I came, mm -hmm. you know, at times, like a lot of people, I came from a chaotic family, but who doesn't, you know, yeah. and I didn't have the coping uh, tools. And, um, once exposed, you know, to, you know, my first drink, my, the disease, you know, the beast was awakened for yeah. me yeah. and, uh, feeling like, you know, um, the eating disorder, you know, you just didn't know, I, again, I didn't know any better, you know, right. I, binging and purging. I mean, I've gone from anorexic to, you know, obesity. So I've hit every aspect mm -hmm. of every level of right, eating disorders. Right. So many addictions. Many, many. Have, have affected you. Yeah, yeah many. Very interesting. So what, what would you say to someone out there struggling right now? with an eating disorder or with a substance abuse issue? You know, I would say do the work. I would say, you know, try to get to know yourself and, and have somebody, you know, know that you're not alone. Know that you're not alone. You're not the only person that is going through this. A lot of times I felt like this is just happening to me, yeah. you know, and you know that there are ways of getting better and it's baby steps. You know, I like instant gratification. It rarely comes to me these right. days um, in that way. So, you know, I have to do the work, you know, and that, there is help, you know, there is hope, there is hope. And I know there's so many people out there that feel so hopeless and go, oh my God, this is just gonna be my life. What was your epiphany? What was your like, oh, your ha aha moment? Like, this is it. Um, you know, I'm a returnee. It's not my first time trying to get sober. It, okay. I, um, I feel like my aha moment was um, when I came to in the psych ward after trying to hang myself. Oh, wow. You know, and I was in a five point strap and uh, I couldn't speak. You know, I had a lot of problems because of the fixation. I couldn't walk. I, you know, I was peeing and pooping myself and I was in depends. I like to call them diapers. This is from this experience of, of trying to, to kill yourself? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And it was my last, oh, wow. it was my last day, you know, um, oh, my. it was coming into treatment yet again. And uh, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, I ended up in the psych ward, you know, how did I get here? You know, what mm -hmm. happened to me? Like, I just wanted that relief when I was, you know, 12 years old from that first drink. Mm -hmm. And I always equate, equated uh, drinking to happy and joyous because in Argentina, my family, you know, they drank and they had it's a good time. It's part of the culture. Yeah, and there was a lot of laughter and joy. And, you know, I just wanted to feel that. And from 12 on, how did I get there? You know, yeah. I just remember like, how did I get here? What am I doing? That's a pretty low bottom, but yeah. you know, how low do you have to go, right? So I've always felt that sometimes drinking, using can often, you know, go into areas such as sexual place, places and things that we would never be a part of, right? Yeah. And now we're seeing in the media so much about sexual harassment. And there you were, you know, you were a, an actress, you were with some amazing, powerful people, um, you were a model, you know, you're with photographers. I'm wondering if you're drinking and using, if it all sort of went together, the sexual harassment and being in positions and situations that you wouldn't have been in otherwise. You know, I, I think that's a great question. I feel like, you know, uh, when I was modeling, there were times my mom couldn't travel with me because of my little brother. And mm -hmm. so the agents would promise my mom the world that when I'd land in some certain country, I'd be you. taken care of by the head agent, this and that. And uh, I would land in, in like, for example, Japan, and I was all on my own. And mm -hmm. I lived in a male model's uh, apartment building. And, you know, the drinking and the and the drugging, you know, it, it, it helped cope and it helped me deal with things. And it actually also made me feel like I could fit in. Right. At, back right. then and um, you know there has been times you know from my modeling career to my acting career that I've been put uh, you know in bad situations not just from drinking and using yeah but um, you know because I'm uh, you know meeting some head honcho of a studio exactly. or whatnot and you know 
I didn't have that voice that I do today, you know, and I think it's so important in recovery to find your voice. Well, you and I were talking earlier about it. It's like we, because I had the same experience. I worked at a talent agency. I was only 18 or 19, and I was definitely objectified and harassed, and we would giggle. We'd yeah, we get that like, uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. We can yeah. get through it. Or Well, or, or that, oh, I'm getting attention. Oh, this, like, somehow we didn't, I didn't understand. Now, this is not okay. Yeah. This doesn't feel right. But it was more like, like you were saying earlier, we were like sort of judging ourselves by what was happening on the outside. Yeah. Like we're getting this attention. Exactly. And like learning to say no. I mean, for yeah. me, in no recovery, boundaries. so hard. Like the four hardest words I've ever learned in my life is no, that's inappropriate. I don't know. And help me. Yeah. You know, and practicing that has been such a hard thing. I mean, even today, you know, you do that uncomfortability, you know intuitively that doesn't feel right. And how do you walk away from it? You know, and now that more people are speaking about it and coming out about it, you know, you feel more power to that, you know, and that we're not just objectified. And I feel like it happens to males as well. Sure. I've been speaking a lot about that where I go around and I speak all over the country and I speak to people who are, you know, early in recovery from detox to sober livings and uh -huh. And, um, you know, I've been talking about it because I feel we all go through this. You know, yeah. we get, a, you know, somehow we're all assaulted in some way, you know, verbally, physically, you know, emotionally, sexually, you know, some way. And how do we stop that? Well, we stop that. You know, I always feel like, you know, I don't believe that I change unless I change. Well, you and know, that's one of the work. issues is the trauma piece that I think we, we alluded to. In other words, if you have trauma from these experiences or early trauma and these things show up, what happens is we freeze. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get out of that unfreeze? Well, hopefully all this media attention is making people more aware. And so even if they freeze, they sort of have this awareness that, you know, I need to speak up. I need to have boundaries here. This is not okay. Yeah. Because you can't really blame yourself if you're like, oh my God, fight or flight. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Because that's just the natural response when things are happening to you that are, un you know, unacceptable or inappropriate. Yeah, they really are. I feel that you know um today i don't have to I, I practice not trying to live in fear as much you know and fear can just override people you know and addicts and alcoholics out there using or trying to get sober you know i, I always go like i i know where you've been like because i didn't know here nor there and how i was going to mm -hmm. get through just the day and who i was going to be and what i wanted to become and like how life was really going to change you know right it's kind of amazing and you don't even realize it's not just the the, the not using anymore more. It's your whole perception about yeah. life. It's the way you look at things. Oh, yeah. It's, it just completely changes. Yeah, seeing through clear eyes. What about the, you were on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So what was that like as a sober woman? Because there seems to be a lot of parties yeah. on, on, the, on those shows. You know, I remember um, I was uh, five uh, years sober when I started doing that. And uh, I was doing um, celebrity rehab at the time. Okay. I had just finished, and I was shooting both. Oh, okay. And, um, I was really confused at, in the beginning. I'd be like, oh my God. Like, and I was so like intimidated at yes. first, but it was so chaotic, you know? And, and I feel that again, you know, what I do for a living is not who I am, is what I say, you know? And like, yes, I love what I do. I'm very, like, I'm so grateful for what I do, but mm -hmm. what I do for a living helps me take care of my family and like get gas in the car and like mm -hmm. buy waters and stuff like that. But to believe that that is your bubble, you know, yeah. um, is, is, is always a scary thing, at least for me. I feel, you know, it's been such an amazing experience being on The Housewives. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for it. It gave me a huge platform to keep carrying the message, and yes. that's always, like, my, my like, ulterior motive. So you were is, like, transparent about your sobriety on yes, the show? Yes, yes. Oh, wow. I have no shame. Like, and I don't believe everyone has to break their an anonymity. Yes, um, yes. I really am not an advocate of, like, oh, break it. But for well, me... it's your, I, your story. It's my story, and if that my story can help you know I can stand in any situation as a woman with integrity and in recovery I don't have to carry any kind of flag of recovery right. but I know that when it gets uncomfortable I leave you know mm -hmm. and that show never got me uncomfortable the women on the show were great you uh -huh. know I just felt um, it was uh, it was it was it was amazing but it was also um, it was a different kind of world that yeah you know yeah it is it's it's that's why they it's, it's a reality tv but is it a reality tv it's a, yeah it's kind of a, a it's not 
it's not how most people live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, there was a lot of chaos. Yeah, I mean, I got it though. I mean, I, I could watch it after a while. I'd watch what was going on on set and stuff, and I'm like, okay, you know. And and I had, you know, again, I had a lot of empathy, you mm -hmm. know. And, and I feel, I feel like we're all going through something, addict or no addict, you know, like. We all go through something at different times. Sure. And also people who are in recovery, you know, I'm almost gonna be 12 years sober wow. in January. Congratulations, Thank Jan. you, thank you. Um, and I feel that someone who's standing by me on the same amount of days, like we're probably going through two different things, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I, again, you know, I, it's all such a new experience. I've never A, been sober this long. B, have I been sober on this date? Mm. So it's a new, like I, I feel like a newcomer a lot, you well, know? It also sounds like you're just really present. Like this is today. Yeah. And whatever today brings, today brings. Yeah. You know, it, it's going to be different. Tomorrow is yeah. different yesterday. Every day is different. And, and there's going to be ups and downs. There's a lot. Yeah, I call them you know? moments. I have a lot of moments. Yeah, it's, life is an ebb and flow. I mean, it just isn't always the same. And I think that's important, you yeah. know, whether you're sober or not sober. I mean, yeah. it's just, I think you have a better chance of more happy days sober. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you do. And I remember um, my therapist once said to me, um, and I was at five years sober, they, he said, you know, what about happy? And I was working already and I was doing all these things and I was like, what? Like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And I started uncovering, discovering happy, you know, and what mm. that means for me. Or fun, you know, and, and it changes, you know, I'm not 20 anymore. So um, what is sober fun for you? Sober fun is, is being present and like just going through like my experience. Like, I, I mean, I love, I, I do so many different things that, you know, just being in a day's journey is is such a trip, you know? Uh -huh. Well, it was so sweet because when you got here and I said, oh, you had to drive so far, and you're like, no, it was a beautiful tr drive. And I'm like, that's recovery. Yeah. Like, it has nothing to do with the alcohol or the drugs. It's just like, I'm appreciating this moment, this view, and this drive. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the drive is different. I mean, I guess the fun is different too. Like for me, it's so, family is so important to me. You know, and spending time with my family is is so key to me and it makes me happy, you Aww. know? And, and me knowing that like, you know, coming from having to provide for my family and all this stuff, like realizing like I was never God, you know, and that we all loved and embraced each other, like job or no job, like, you know, happy or sad, uh -huh. like we're always together and we get through it, you know? But, it, but it did set you up for some issues later on that need oh, yeah. to, to people please and need the, having the responsibility of taking care of others. Yeah, I'm a um, caretaker and that's another thing is that I feel like this year in my life I've I've realized how codependent I really am like and you know I'm an addict I'm in recovery but I love addicts I love you know yeah, and I, yeah. I, I you know I work around in treatment and right and uh, and so I'm like wow I'm all around it and yeah you have to have really good boundaries yeah. and you have to you, you know you have to start where they are and you can't work harder than they're willing to work yeah. and that's a huge lesson you yeah. know as healers in in this um, field so we do reach a lot of families with recovery today magazine so there may be a family member out there watching this and really sad and in a lot of despair because they can't get their their loved ones sober and they keep going to treatment centers and it's this whole round robin what would you say to that family member um, I would tell them that um, they're not the cause of it. They can't cure it, you know, and they can't change it, it, but to yeah. do the work and to believe, you know, and to, I always say like, I don't know if I'd be sitting here if it wasn't for my mother's prayers. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, um, she, she fought in believing, you know, deeply. And um, whatever people's religious beliefs are, like she, you know, I remember she'd go, um, people would tell me she'd like go to church and she'd say, wow. please pray for my daughter. She's yeah. a drug addict. And um, I, I think it was her belief that that's kept beautiful. me going. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, and that there are miracles, you know, and that people, yes. it stopped the enabling. Like I remember when my mom, I'm so glad Al-Anon didn't get a hold of my mom until I walked into uh, treatment, but um, I just remember she stopped the behavior. You know, she stopped behavior. enabling me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we think... And nobody gave her a rule book. Like, how was she supposed to know she was enabling? Like, yeah. they don't teach you that. Yeah, I don't you know? sometimes realize exactly. that I'm enabling. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and I'm in recovery and I work in it, you know, but when it's We're in your human, face... Jen. yeah, We're absolutely human. Absolutely. And, and you know, I always, um, you know, I, I say, like, you can't enable them into a grave any longer. Like, it's... And they're... 
they're addicts. They know how to live. You know what I mean? Like they uh, can survive. Yeah. Like I, uh, my ex-husband, he, uh, he, he's an alcoholic. He's now in recovery. He's got two years sober. But I remember my sponsor would say, you got to stop co-signing his BS. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that simple. And I'm a therapist, worked on a TV show. Yeah. We're human. Yeah. You know, um, I, I've worked really hard because on this part is that I'm in love with love. You know, and, and I don't know if it's from wanting to give love that I was so given, you know, uh -huh. but I can't love somebody into their grave, you know, mm -hmm. and I do work hard on that. You know, yeah. I always thought like, oh, okay, after I did the steps, it was going to get easier. I, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it does and it doesn't. Like I have to keep working, well, you know, Well, that's on why myself. it was so brilliant, the one day at a time. I mean, it's brilliant because yeah. it is. It's constantly changing and it's morphing into other things. Yeah. And, but you always have that foundation. So I'm going to assume that the 12-step model have really worked for you. Yeah, it yeah. really has. And, you know, honestly, I always say, like, I think back about, you know, my early recovery and, like, how lost I really was and how I still had no hope. But all I did was... I would listen to the old timers and they would say, just believe that we believe, kid. Exactly. You know, and I sometimes will like call them up and be like, just believe that you believe, right? And they'll yeah. be like, yeah, Aww. kid, just believe. You know, and That's great. it was like having someone like I was so blessed to have Bob Forrest as um, yes, as my yes. one of my counselors in treatment because he, he worked is love at Los Encinas where mm -hmm. I went and uh, back in the day. And, and uh, he is love. He really is, you know, but with this epidemic that's going on, you know, and now like the new you know the new generation that's coming like not um it's it's no longer like there are no more second chances i feel like out there using you know oh. i always say especially on the east coast and i'm there a lot you know and i work with these kids you know because well, it's so much more severe it's opiate addiction they're it's 18 years old exactly. and it's like they're like seventh treatment and and I get it. I get it. You know, mm -hmm. I get not yeah. being able to get it at first. Right. But um, they go out and they use it and then I find out they're dead. You exactly. know, I mean, it, it, it's not about like, you know, how cute you are. It's about life well, or death. It's about saving your tush, you know. You know, we used to always say, and I don't know, maybe it's not true anymore. Relapse, you know, can be part of the disease. It is part of the disease. Is it? It doesn't have to be. Yeah. You know, do we need to say that? I'm not know. an avid, like... It's not my story. It's my not, my yeah. story is I've, I'm a returnee. My sponsor got sober once. She stayed sober, and she still is sober. So it That's a possibility, too. It doesn't yeah. have to be part it, of the story. Yeah. And if it is, no shame. You just, there's no shame. Yeah. I think it's so important to break the stigma of shame. Uh, of, you know, addicts and alcoholics are really beautiful people. They are so in tune. Creative, and resourceful. Yes. I, I, I can't imagine working with any other population. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. And, you know... People look down still on the addict, you know, and like, you know, you can be, you know, a crazy person trying to, you know, shoot them all or something and like, they'll be like bad person, but an addict still gets lo looked down on. And well, just like if you had a family member that had cancer, there'd be so much sympathy and empathy and support. You have a family member that's an addict. It's like, what did you do? Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's unbelievable that it is 2000. 17 and it's still an issue yeah i mean it, it's heartbreaking to see that and you know to see um so many kids in treatment you know um and struggling and 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 more and more just coming to and at least they're trying to get help gives me a little hope you know yeah, that yeah. does give me hope it's getting ready to dig deep you know and i remember when i first walked into the rooms i was 21 years old and i was like i'm too young for this and i look at these kids and i'm like if I only you got it, when you got it, it, you exactly. would rule your own universe. Oh my God, your life will be completely different. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But you get it when you get it, you know? That's the whole thing. Yeah. It is what it is. So what's next for you, Jen? What are you doing now? Um, well, I am speaking all over the country, and I love doing that. I, I, would, I don't know what I would do with with not being able to do that in my life today. There is nothing better in my life than when I work with another um, fellow, mm -hmm. fellow addict and alcoholic. I'm in the process of doing a documentary and I'd oh, love to come back yeah. and talk about that. Sure. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's something I'm really passionate about. And um, you know, it's very tedious, but it's amazing. And, and I really do hope it'll help people. Oh. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm still acting. Uh, I'm up for a movie right now, so uh, oh, we'll see what happens with that. Fingers. Yeah, crossing fingers. Yeah. 
And you know, I feel like, you know, th there's a lot of things I'm still like not done. My story's not done. Mm. Um, I'm really excited for this this year um, and to see where everything will take me, you know? Aww. I'm very optimistic. It's kind of nice because I I tend to be a pessimistic, but uh -huh. I'm changing you that You would one never too. know that. Really? No, no, never. I'm a great self-sabotager. I oh mean, I used to be. I, I work really hard on that, you know? and. And, uh, and I've had a new freedom to it uh, today. Yeah. And, you know, I eventually would like to hopefully, like, either merge with someone in, in like, open a treatment center. Okay. Um, or, um, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I'm, like, kind of toying with that idea. But that's the beauty of recovery. It just keeps, like I said earlier, morphing into other things. You yeah. know, you just don't know where you're going to land. Today you landed here with us. I know. And I'm, I'm so, so grateful. And I have to give you a big oh, hug. Oh, thank you. I love you so much.